or 302 actually. I got, suddenly I looked and went, oh no, I was busy typing away and doing whatever to prep for the show, but hey, it's 3 p.m. or 3.02, and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. Hope you're all doing great. I actually, I mean, I think I'm a little bit flustered here. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, Jennifer Tuttle, I forgot to put my ear pods in or my AirPods, so let me do that because it actually makes a seal in my conversation with you. So hold on one second. Well, they're not here, so I'm not gonna be putting them in today. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go with the flow and what's going on. So today, hey, Cynthia Berman, are you just uh, wearing an apron? <laughs> Does it look like that? I have on a dress and, you know, and it's, um, oh my God, that's hilarious. But listen, if that's your fantasy, okay, right? Um, <laughs> no, I'm not just wearing an apron, oh God. Like, what else today, guys? Okay. So I hope you're all having a great day. And today we're making chicken de soie for dinner. And I am gonna start out with making hard boiled eggs because making hard boiled eggs, hey Susie, good afternoon to you, can actually sometimes be a challenge. And I have found, hey Frank, I have found the absolute perfect recipe. If you can believe you need a recipe for hard boiled eggs. So it starts first. Um, Thank you, Jennifer, very, very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, I had a lunch date today and I wore this to my lunch date instead of um, changing into my t-shirt. And I'm going out for Shabbat services to my synagogue this evening. And of course, I won't go without uh, wearing a jacket over this dress to synagogue, but I am, um, but I don't wear it with a jacket when it's 111 degrees outside. So anyway, so thank you so much. So, okay. So, I'm gonna take these eggs, I'm gonna immerse them in already boiling water. I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes, if you can see that, 10 minutes. Um, that looked like 10 seconds, so let me, let me stop that. There, that was 10 seconds, okay. All right, stop, we're gonna clear, and we're gonna do uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, there we go, and start it, okay. So now it's 10 minutes and 11 seconds probably. So we're counting down 10 minutes. Then at 10 minutes, I'm gonna reset the timer for one minute because it's gonna take me one minute to take them out of this pan and put them into an ice bath. And by an ice bath, I mean that you put it into ice with water in it so that when you then immerse it in the water, it immediately stops the cooking. Not only does it stop the cooking so that these hard boiled eggs are absolutely perfect, the perfect sort of soft, uh, hard boiled white and soft medium boiled yolk, which are delicious in the salad. But when it comes to peeling them, you will see the skin slides off. You never have to worry about taking off pieces or skinning the top. It's just absolutely perfect. So I've shared this with you in the past, but I'm going to share it with you again today. All right. So let's turn around and let's, I'm gonna bring my compost bowl just a little bit closer. Okay, and um, what I'm going to do next is we're gonna walk through a few things that are old. For those of you who've been following and coming to my lives every day, I've talked frequently about the food grade hydrogen peroxide. So I have gone through and I have cleaned absolutely everything that I'm gonna be putting in this salad. So if you look behind me, these are all bagged, ready to go. The chicken was roasted last night, and they're gonna be skinning it and cutting it. But I left these peppers specifically for me to share with you how I clean peppers. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is food grade hydrogen peroxide, mix six to one um, in, in the bottle. And um, you can buy it on Amazon, or you can go to my website and look for Game Changers, and it's there. Let me, these tomatoes have already been sprayed and rinsed. Now when it comes to stuff that are in Nanny Bubby's um, garden, I don't do food grade hydrogen peroxide on them. I do rinse them well because there's dust and there's bugs, you know, that could be on it. Hey Lisa, but um, when it comes to store-bought, even if it's organic, we're gonna spray, especially in peppers, the very top, because a lot of dirt gets in there. Then we're gonna spray the skins and let it set because that's where people's hands 
have touched these peppers when sifting through them uh, to see if they like the skins on them or you know moving on to the next you know how we all I think what we really do without realizing it is that we reach in and we hold and look we actually think we're using our eyes the truth is I actually think that we're tuning ourselves to the energy of the fruit or pepper and if it feels like for some reason it doesn't look right or feel right to us we put it back sometimes that could be and I've noticed this that maybe it looks fine but maybe it fell off the rack it fell onto the floor which means it's gonna have a bruise on it from somebody an hour before I got there and they put it up and put it back and I come in and I take it and put it in my hand and I don't know there's just something about it and I put it back so these were picked out with my energy I always try to attune myself to the energy of whatever it is that I'm picking up hey Sue Platner so nice to have you here and um, and then I put them in my basket so what I want to show you is when you spray these with food grade hydrogen peroxide if I can turn that do you see the white foam that is accumulating up there that means that there was bacteria in there and so the food grade hydrogen peroxide is actually getting rid of it that happens quite a bit on the skin of a cucumber even an English cucumber uh, you spray those and the foam will come up especially regular cucumbers cucumbers because people are touching the skins um, on tomatoes this happens for sure you'll see little tomatoes and and you don't realize sometimes that there is a a bruise and a small little opening on a tomato and what will happen over time is that tomato will actually um, turn to mold and be sitting with the rest of the tomatoes and so the foam comes up you see it and it gives you an opportunity to actually throw it away much quicker so now that these are processed and we can see where all the bacteria actually is on these peppers I'm gonna take it and the food grade hydrogen peroxide has actually done a great job of nicely and healthily disinfecting. So I, I do that, of course, only on the outer skins. The inner skins have you know, come to us via nature. So I don't worry so much about that. I rinse them if I need to get seeds off. But when it comes to the inside, I don't want to uh, disturb those uh, too much. So. Um, okay here we go so let me rinse or actually dry so you can see there's like a little bruise right here I don't know if you can see that but I didn't see that when I was in the store and it's possible that I don't know it happened before I got there I don't think I dropped it um, but anyway it is what it is I'll cut around it and just drying these off okay so the first thing that I'm gonna do, let me check on time, so we've still got about four and a half minutes to go for our, boy, that's really a bad pepper. So let's take these, um, so do you rinse, yes, I just rinsed the peroxide off, you saw it, okay. Um, so let's do this. Let me remind you how to cut a pepper because it is just so cool. So starting with this one, I'm gonna start over here on this side. and. What you do is you're gonna cut between the two ribs. So you see where it's indented here and indented there. Those are ribs. And what we're going to do is grab this and just cut between. And you can see right there inside, the ribs are still there, but this has none on it. Then you're gonna turn again and cut between the ribs. This one just a little bit thinner and this one right here. And then this is where those bruises are. So I'm actually just gonna cut this off like that. And can you see that? You can. And I'm just gonna cut down just like this. This was bruised, so this was not a good example, but we'll do it again. We've got three more examples to go. And then I will take these and I am going to just slice them in thin little julienne pieces. Go. This is, they smell so fresh you know I walked into Whole Foods this afternoon to get what I needed for tonight's dinner and I will tell you I looked up and I just fell in love with what I saw the radishes were the beautiful purple radishes the kale was out 
Um, the peppers were fresh. They just were glowing and saying, buy me, buy me. Um, the cucumbers, the colors, the tomatoes. I mean, look at these tomatoes. Fresh organic tomatoes are making their way off the vine and coming into the stores now, except for Las Vegas, where our tomatoes harvest in May. Everywhere else, really, except the desert southwest, are just now getting into their tomato harvest. They're all, uh, it's warm enough out in July where they're, they become ripe, and so, You've got the, the dark, you know, purple tomatoes. You've got the yellow tomatoes, the sun golds. You've got the bright red cherry tomatoes. And just the whole department just looks beautiful. And that was just in the vegetables. So it wasn't even in the, in the fruit. So there you go, another time. I should have cut there. I'm just gonna cut that vein right off. Okay, so let's start again right here. Okay, we've got a minute and 36 seconds on the hard-boiled eggs. And there on the bottom, you saw that. Tell me you saw it. Let's see who else is here. Um, Sue Platner, oh gross. Okay, Lisa, who else is here? I can look and see who's here. Let's see if it tells me. Jennifer Tuttle, Frank, Lisa, Sue Platner, Susan Foreman, Cynthia Berman. Um, but that's not nine. So there's nine of you that are here that have not said hello or given me a thumbs up and I can't tell if you're here or not. Uh, Roseanne is there. Hey, Roseanne, there you are. So nice to see you. And I'm so happy uh, to have you here today. And just wanna, everybody, can we all give Roseanne just a, a really nice applause? She takes care of everybody in the gather group. She's so sweet. And she sent out this beautiful welcome to the so many um, new, uh, gatherers that we got and gather with Nanny Bubby and it is just amazing that we are up to 425 um, people in the gather group and so it's it's just incredible um, I mean really incredible so thank you all so much for being there now Frank if you're listening I've only asked you about three times what you think you might be cooking on Wednesday when we cook together on the 18th and I'm just gonna ask you again. There you go, Lisa. Thank you for thanking Roseanne. Four, three, two, one. Okay, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop this and I am going to clear this and I'm going to do um, one minute, start it, because it's gonna take me one minute to fill this with ice, so you'll excuse me real quickly. right here and I'm gonna fill this with water no time to turn the camera because we're gonna come back to that view in just a minute okay so I re I did it for 10 minutes and then I knew I would only have one minute left and what have we got here we've got 16 seconds and then I'm going to dig in chicken a la paisano that sounds amazing that sounds amazing Frank we're, we're all so excited it's five four three two one and blast off there we go okay i love this timer okay so i'm going to just take these four eggs and drop them right into the ice bath there you go i might actually just grab a few more ice cubes let me just dump a little bit of this water out because these ice cubes melted very quickly so let me just grab a handful more hold on stand by Right there. Okay, so now I just wanna just remind you. So what just happened is um, we took these out of the boiling water and what we wanna do is we want to cause them to stop boiling and stop cooking. So if I just took them out and just ran a little bit of cool water over them and put them on the side they would keep cooking but what happens is when you put them in an ice bath like this is that it stops the cooking immediately same thing happens when you make green beans so when i um uh when i did, did these green beans 
you let these cook until they become a bright, bright green. Then I sometimes go about 30 seconds into that or a minute into that, and that's when they're done. And then you submerge them into an ice bath as well, and that stops the cooking right away. Because if you don't, then they keep cooking when you take them out, and then they are just a different texture than when you took them out. So ice baths are just the best invention. So Frank said, and I want to say hi to Sandy Hammergren. Thank you for being here. Um, Frank said that he's making chicken paisano and um, pickling spice, oh, not pickling, thinly sliced spice chicken round, uh, chicken round, uh, send me the end of vodka sauce. I think he's typing while he's driving. Uh, vodka sauce with mushrooms and top with mozzarella or fontina. That sounds wonderful, Frank. Okay, um, Frank, you and I will connect next week and we'll get all set up on our Zoom. Okay, so while these uh, hard-boiled eggs are in, I forgot what they were, um, are in the ice bath, I'm just gonna remind you and I'm gonna show you this. When I dump them out and when I get ready to peel them, you will not believe how absolutely clean they peel. Hey, Mark. You're fine, no worries about being late. I was two minutes late myself for one of the few times I've ever been late, um, but thank you for being here. So um, I'm gonna show you how they peel. They peel easier and that is really the biggest benefit of, let me just repeat the process. First boil the water, then submerge the eggs for 11 minutes, take them out right into the ice bath, uh, let them sit in the ice bath until you're ready for them and you will not believe how easily they peel. Um, th that recipe was actually on the Pioneer Woman uh, show, and Harmony and I, my daughter and I, tried it, and we could not believe it. It was like we were dancing. We said, you've got to try this, and she's the one that actually found it, believe it or not, and so it was, it was revolutionary for us because we eat a lot of hard-boiled eggs, and she used to make hard-boiled eggs every uh, week to take for lunch in at the courthouse and um, she just loved that just loves it okay and the men in our lives don't want to know how we do it it's like we say they make hard-boiled eggs and they get mad because they don't peel and we say we're trying to tell you how to do it but for some reason they just don't want to they don't want to learn it they, they just want to complain about it by the way if my husband is watching and I don't think he's here um, he's at the club working out but which is crazy because we both went to the club at four o'clock this morning, but he's back. He is so committed right now. But um, what was I gonna say? He helped me get ready for the show today because I had a lunch date and I enjoyed myself a lot and didn't want, I just left later than I had planned to just because time went. Do you know what it's like when you're having lunch with a good friend? Um, and so I said, Tom, I need you to help me get this lettuce cleaned and you know, blah, 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 and he was here for me, so I just wanted to thank him so very much. Okay, so let me get the rest of these cut, and then I am going to show you how I assemble this chicken nisqua. The chicken will be the last thing I put on, uh, and I have a little trick to how I cut the chicken. I saw Martha Stewart do this for a turkey, and I thought it was genius, and so many of you probably may use that technique already. But, okay, so here are two orange and two red peppers. Um, and I'm umming a lot today, and I'll stop doing that. So let's start, I'm gonna push these over. I need to get, I mean, this is the problem with this, where I'm at in this kitchen, is that the view on the iPhone is just so narrow that the space that I need to really be able to set this up and show you is just very, very limited. But I will do my best here. Give me one second. And, um, all right. Okay. All right. So let me see if I can, I think I just need to, give me one second to move the rest of this around. Oh my goodness. I think sometimes you think that salads are gonna be a lot easier to make, but honestly, so many different things go into salads and there's lots of chopping and there's lots of space and there that it takes up and lots of cleaning. Um, so it becomes a little more 
a little more difficult. Okay, so I'm going to take this beautiful platter. As you can see, this is an, a very old platter that I have. But this platter gets the turkey every single year. And not only does it get the turkey, but when I make a big salad nassoir for dinner, it just gives me a lot of room to work on. So I absolutely love this platter, the size of it. At this point, I wish it were all white, um, but it's not, and you know what? The color gets covered with the greens anyway. So anyway, it is pretty to look at, and it's one of my old favorites. So let's see here. Okay, we are gonna start with some romaine lettuce. There we are. And we're just gonna sprinkle this around. There we go. And this, of course, has been washed, as you can see. All right, I'm put just a little bit more. Here's the fresh bag that Tom helped me clean this afternoon. And I'm just gonna put just a little, sprinkling a handful right here. So in our house, we eat a lot of salads. We run downstairs and, and grab a little bit of salad to eat for lunch. And, um, we go through it a lot. We go through it a lot. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to add the rest of this arugula and how beautiful. Hey, uh, Leslie Fuller, very nice to see you here. Thank you for joining us. We're making a chicken nassau salad today. We're starting here with romaine. We're putting the sprinkling just a little bit of arugula on top. So there we go. Okay, so from here, we're going to sprinkle on. How about if we sprinkle on? The peppers so and I like it as a sprinkle because it's it's less intentional and so you kind of want it to be a, a, a less deconstructed um, salad in the underpinnings of it and you know yesterday was really fun because that spicy plum salad how many of you saw that spicy plum salad that I posted I did take a picture of it because it, it really was beautiful and it just, and I posted the recipe for all of you as well. It wasn't in Gather, it went straight into Nanny Bubby, but I, it, the way that it accidentally came through is the way that it went. So usually I post those recipes in Gather, but, um, but it was in Nanny Bubby. So if you are looking for it, it is probably right below this live. So let me get my famous tomato slicer, hold on. So as you can see, as I turn around, I am not just wearing an apron here. <laughs> I am wearing a dress with a high neck, so that's, uh, I, I guess apparently that's what it must look like. <laughs> oh gosh, some of the things that happen when you're live, right? So I'm just gonna take these tomatoes and pop them in. There we go, so that one down there is a little bit bigger and it won't go all the way down, which is perfectly fine because you're just gonna cut through it anyway. It will loosen up, there you go, as you do it. And then we're just gonna take it. There we go. And I'm gonna be a little more intentional with the tomatoes. I'm gonna put them towards the outside. Just send them in circles around. There we go. And now I'm going to do a few more of the sun golds here. So let's see, Maruka is here. Thank you, Maruka, for joining us. Happy to see you. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Okay. I think that should be enough of the sun golds. And then I'm going to take the, what I call the heirloom color tomatoes. I actually don't know the exact name for them, but I love the purple tomatoes. I love the taste of them. I love the color of them. I love the maroon look of them. And these little tops are still on them. Nonetheless, here we go. So let's see, Roseanne says, I'll post the recipe in the album section of Gather later today. Thank you so much, Roseanne. Thank you so much. And Roseanne did that very, very beautiful email to all the brand new gatherers, which I'm sure was very welcoming. So if you guys haven't done so already, go over to Gather with Nanny Bubby and um, go ahead and just say hello to, the list is like 25 people long or more, and uh, just welcome them. Let them know that they're cared about, that we have this amazing, loving community. It's just 
unbelievable. It makes me so proud. It brings tears to my eyes. And Denise, hello, said, um, what is that tomato cutter? So see, Denise, you are new to us. And this is my very favorite kitchen tool. Those gatherers who have been here for a while, that's sometimes why I go back and sort of reintroduce things that, um, that I have done in the past. So, you know, Roseanne and Frank and a few others are, you know, uh, Lene won one of these, Arlene won one of these. Um, this is my famous tomato slicer. You can get these on Amazon. So type in tomato slicer. You're gonna get a lot of different things, uh, but you will see one just like this. And uh, sometimes this part is green, sometimes it's red. This is the tube, this is the blade. Can you see that? That's the blade. And then it just slices right onto here, opens those up, right? Can you imagine how long this would take me if I were having to do it um, one by one by one cherry tomato, right? So just a few more of these fabulous tomatoes. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, now, next we are going to slice up the cucumber. Now, I just wanna remind you, I just have to show you this again. Let's see, Maruka said, hi Marla, it's Ernan. Oh, hey Ernan, really? How come you're under that name? What do you recommend to cook with olive oil or avocado oil? Everything, absolutely everything. Yes, absolutely everything. So um, what do I recommend? I mean, olive oil for salad dressings, avocado oil when you fry or when you bake at high temperatures. Um, yeah, a lot. So Ernan, I did not know that you are there under the name of Maruka, which I did not know. And I'm wondering why. Um, and he said, I'm watching it with my mom. Oh, okay. Mwah. Hello, Maria. So Maria has worked for our family for, I think it's 26 years now. Yes, it is 26 years, if you can imagine. And um, she has been in our home once a week or twice a week for 26 years. She and her family are like family to us. So that's amazing. I always wondered who that was. So thank you. Okay. All right. So stand by. I just want to show you guys one quick thing. So these are the cucumbers, Armenian cucumbers. Look at the size of this thing. I mean, this is not trick TV here. This cucumber was six and a half pounds and 24 inches. It actually weighed more and was longer than my kids when they were born. Can you imagine this? Like, this is unbelievable. And this one was three and a half pounds. Hey there, Sue Emmer. So nice to see you. How are you, Sue Emmer? Thank you for joining us. So you might think, why is she not cutting into her fresh picked out of her garden cucumbers and the answer to that is that I had no idea that those cucumbers were ready to be harvested because a week ago they were this size and when we saw the size of them I had to get them out so here's the thing I know oh my god on the cucumbers right um, this English cucumber was already in my refrigerator and so today I am using this in the salad and then tomorrow I'm gonna start working on these cucumbers if I don't give them away so, hold on, just one minute. So, I always find that the best way to take care of cucumbers is actually, especially English cucumbers, is actually to um, seed them first. And I need the whole countertop to do it, so I'm just gonna move this plate over. Forgive me for the space that I am limited to by the iPhone. So, here we go, all right. So, what I'm gonna do is first slice it in half crosswise, then I'm gonna slice them in half long ways. There we go. And then I'm going to seed them. So this is a grapefruit spoon, as you all know. Let me pull this up here. And I'm just going to seed out all of the seeds in the English cucumber. I also seed the Armenian cucumber. So before I eat it, let me get this, okay go so in my um, in my uh, historical tradition we celebrate um, 
Shabbat or the Sabbath, for those of you uh, in the Christian world that call it the Sabbath, we celebrate it from sundown on Friday night until sundown on Saturday night. In fact, all of the Jewish holidays start at sundown and um, end the following day at sundown. It's just part of our tradition. And so, as you know, the Christian world goes to church on Sundays, but Jews go Friday night and during the day on Saturday until sundown. And so I have the wonderful opportunity today. Um, I am the past president of our synagogue, uh, and Roseanne's husband, Harry, Heidemann was born Jewish. He was bar mitzvahed, but he has not been back to synagogue since he was bar mitzvahed. And I guess she had a wonderful conversation with him about, you know, why he doesn't go. And he did not have a great experience when he was a kid with going to synagogue. And so he never went back. Like, it was like, dear God, just get me through this bar mitzvah and then get me the hell out of here. And sometimes that's not an uncommon experience, really. I mean, I think it is with anything. But by the way, um, she called me knowing that I was the, um, a president of our synagogue and asked me if I might have a recommendation. I, it was so far back, I can't remember how it came down. And I, I said, I would be happy to accompany both of you to synagogue, but it just so happens that Harry is, or was, the piano player for Sammy Davis Jr. for over 10 years. And he's amazing. If you go on Roseanne's page, you will um, see him playing piano and he's remarkable. And I said, Roseanne, I am not gonna take Harry to just synagogue service because if I did, he would never come back for another 70 years. I mean, that's the way it would be. But instead, um, I wanna take him to the what's called the Shabbatones, which is a rock band jazz band service because I wanted Harry to be able to see how it has evolved through the years with music and being able to bring people in in a more layman's uh, connection and so tonight you know because of COVID we had this conversation in April or May and because of COVID um, we just there was no Shabbaton, but tonight is Shabbaton. So I am so excited that um, I am going to throw them in my car, and I do mean throw them because <laughs> this happened. This synagogue that I happened to go to when once it was in my backyard, I moved, and then it moved, and we are about thirty miles apart now. So as I always say, I have to go through passport control to get here, um, and. Uh, we are driving across town and going to the synagogue service. So um, it's congregation near Tamid. It's amazing. They do a, just a beautiful job. And I'm looking forward to taking Harry there. And I'm taking, looking forward to helping Roseanne learn a little bit about her husband's past culture that um, she really knows not too much about. And uh, so it's gonna be fun. And you know, that's just one of the connections. I can tell you that I knew Roseanne at just a bit of a distance 25 years ago, but Gather with Nanny Bubby and all of us coming together, I've gotten to be very, very good friends with Roseanne. And boy, you know, when you talk about all the new people that have joined Gather with Nanny Bubby, um, this is how, just like meeting Lene for the very first time, I mean, I've been talking to Lene for six months or more, um, we all have, right? Watching her win contest after contest. <laughs> Lene has never won a thing in her life, so she says. Um, and uh, I had the opportunity to meet her for the very first time just uh, two weeks ago. And she offered to lend me her charcuterie board, which was so lovely. And I'm waiting to give it back to her, just sitting here. But nonetheless, these are just the some of the lovely experiences that all of us together, I know that all of you have enjoyed Frank and his cooking and we're looking forward to it again. Um, and you all encourage each other so much, whether it's here, um, and uh, I know all of you have really adored Cynthia and all of the adventures of Thelma and Louise, so to speak, that we have done. And um, so it's great. So that was, that was just my conversation as I, um, as I um, chop cucumber. I gotta keep, gotta keep some movement going here so that you can watch. Okay, so we're gonna bring this back 
and I'm going to just, again, sprinkle the cucumbers on here. And thankfully, I've gotten rid of now the English cucumbers, and I can start working on the giant Armenian. I mean, they're like Jack and the Beanstalk, those things. So I just wanted to remind you that um, about 10 days ago, that cucumber, that uh, six and a half pound cucumber was this size 10 days ago but they grow two inches a day both in the width and in the length and so you can imagine that a cucumber which I'm going to be posting a reel later today of a really small cucumber and showing you that by next week that cucumber is going to be literally like the size of a huge big cucumber it's amazing but two inches a day is a lot of growth so i will um i will take those pictures and and show them to you um it's it's just amazing it's just part of the uh, variety and it just it, i mean when i look at them and see them it almost scares me can i tell you it's like oh my god what are those giants doing there they were not there three days ago but it goes very 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 fast okay so the cucumbers are in, and the next thing I'm gonna do now is I am going to show you, what do I have left? Oh, I have radishes. Oh my God, I'm throwing in the vegetables here. I have radishes. Let me just turn this a little bit. Let me get to the radishes. Okay, radishes. Now in this bag, there was like this, this little one leaf of lettuce that we forgot to chop up. It was just laying out, so we chopped it, and Tom put it into the that radish bag. So let me get it out. And there we go. All right, I'm gonna slice up two radishes. Look at the color of these. Isn't that beautiful? Honestly, if you saw these colors in the produce department today, you just wouldn't believe how absolutely gorgeous it was. It was just absolutely more gorgeous than you could ever imagine. So, okay, let me slice this up. I'm gonna take these bracelets these bangle bracelets off there sliding into the knife okay and of course green beans always on in the swa one thing that is missing are the potatoes because we don't do a lot of uh, starchy carbs at night we might have more at lunch but I tend unless we're doing a celebration and having a, a festivity of some sort that I tend to leave those things out now I believe there's a time to fast and there's a time to feast. And I do not hold back at all when it comes time to feast. We eat what we want when it's time to celebrate. As you know, my son's birthday is coming up. Um, also, I'm doing a baby shower and I am not worried about fat. I'm not worried about gluten. I'm not worried about carbs. I'm just worried about having a beautiful meal that is inviting for everybody that is here and has something for everybody that is here. And I'm certainly used to cooking um, for everybody because in my house I've got a you know keto, a paleo, a, 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 a pescatarian, a vegetarian, a vegan. I mean, I've got it all. So like no matter who comes through that door, I need to make sure that I have something for everybody. So Susie says it's a beautiful salad and I say thank you. She says it looks great and I say thank you for that as well. Okay, are you guys ready to see these hard boiled eggs because that's what's coming next. Well, wait, let me throw in the green beans. Okay, here's the green beans, all steamed and ready to go. And I am literally, let me turn this. I'm trying to, to share a platter here and a cutting board, like a pedestal that I've made here out of the um, out of the cutting board. Okay, into the compost bin here. Okay, let's get these stems off. I thought I got them all prior to cooking, but it looks like I missed a group. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut these like this. Can you see that? Let me turn. Just let me turn right here. There we go. You can see that. And I'm just gonna take this, and I'm just literally gonna slide these all on just flip them on i'm just going to take a little bit more and do that and now i'm going to take this and do just another little grouping and then i'm going to move on to the hard-boiled eggs because you will be so amazed um, at 
I mean, who ever heard of a recipe for hard boiled eggs? But the fact is, is that when you can have perfect hard boiled eggs, while at the same time um, peeling them easily, who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that? Okay, so there's lots of green, the colors are underneath. Okay, so Frank said, what did you feed them? Oh, they're overgrown, I know. They're overgrown because I didn't tend to them as quickly as I should have, Frank. That's, that's the bottom line. And so if they grow two inches a day, that literally is what happened, is that I probably should have cut them three to four days earlier than I did, but I was traveling and I was out of town and I got behind and so <laughs> I gave birth to a giant over there. Okay, all right, so let me dump the water out of the hard boiled eggs and tell me you're ready to see this. Let me just, okay. So I'm gonna take the salad, let me move it off to the side just very quickly, okay. Off to the side we go. All right, so if you are ready, let me get these hard-boiled eggs. So I'm going to show you, let me get the compost basket here so that, yeah, you can see that. Okay, I love this thing, my sister gave me this. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm gonna crack the egg. Now watch what happens. <laughs> Look at how this just flies off. Look at that. It just, it comes off all, almost sometimes in one piece. Here, look at that, just rolls, look at that. Rolls right off, all in one piece. It's just beautiful. And then what I do is I take a paper towel and I just make sure that I wipe it dry before we slice them. Now these are gonna be, as you can see, the white is hard, but the yolk is going to be kind of like a soft boiled, hard boiled egg which I love, and that's what I love. If you want the yolk to be a little bit firmer, then by all means, um, let it cook for 12 minutes instead of 11. So if you're ready, let's crack this one. There we go. And look at this. Kind of get under that skin, there you go. Once you get under that skin, it just rolls right out. And I will tell you that I do not like to eat hard boiled eggs just because I cannot, look at that, right off, like almost the whole shell, right off. I hate to peel them and struggle. I mean, if you've ever peeled a hard boiled egg and like by the time you're done, all you have left is the yolk, that drives me crazy. So when I saw this recipe and I tested it, because you know me, I'm all for testing recipes, um, and it worked, it was like transformative in the kitchen. Okay, here we go. This one actually cracked big chunks. So let's see how this goes. Look at that. With this technique actually, the, the less cracks that it has, the easier it is to peel because as you see in this case, look at that, look at that. Eggshell, almost all in one piece comes off. There's a beautiful hard boiled egg. I know, it's just amazing. I know you ha your mouths have to be dropping. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, Susan's gonna eat fish later, that's great. Okay, here we go. Okay, last egg. Okay, now I'm gonna cut into one of them and I'm just gonna show you how the, uh, whoops, I forgot that, off it comes. Okay, all right, beautiful, right? All righty, let's get rid of this, get a shell off there, let's make sure you can see here. Okay, here we go, ready? Let me just wipe this down a bit, get the green beans off there so that the eggs are nice and clean. Look at that. So look at how, do you see that? The yolk is just not hard boiled, really, but not soft, right? It's just perfect. Look at that. 
Now, I just wanna give you a hint. If ever you make hard boiled eggs and there is a green ring around the yolk, it means you cook them too long. So that's, that's a bad thing. I've done that before and I just thought, well, but if you ever just lose sight of, now look at this one, this one, the yolk is just a little more soft, you know, not quite hard um, and it's just beautiful. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set these in. Here's a yolk, I'm gonna taste it. Mm, perfect, absolutely perfect. Oh, and look at this one. So as I, w I went through cutting them, these, this is you know less firm, less firm, less firm, but still not runny, they're just the perfect. So 11 minutes is what it was, and actually 11 minutes and 10 seconds because I couldn't get the clock to write to work correctly. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you how I'm gonna set these in. Then I'm gonna cut the chicken, Martha Stewart style, and make the dressing, and we're gonna have a good dinner. So let's see, um, okay. So what I do with these is I set them to the edge, just like that, and go around, space them. I think this is gonna need some extra spacing. Okay, there we go. evenly spaced, so it looks like I need to move this a little bit here. There we go, three and three, it's perfect. Okay, look at that. So this is getting, it's starting to take form, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the chicken, and we'll layer it just right on the very top, and then I will show you how I make the dressing. So this chicken that I'm about to show you actually um, is, thank you, Susie. So this chicken I roasted uh, yesterday outside on my rotisserie barbecue. So I have rarely used that rotisserie barbecue, but I absolutely love it. And I'm learning how to do it better and better all the time. So, all right, let me, um, so I use string on this in order to tie the legs and the wings together because if you don't, then they drop down into the barbecue and what ends up happening is um, they burn. And so I, let's see, let me get this to where you can see it a little bit better. Uh, hey, Romy Ashton, there you are. Nice to have you here, thank you so much. All right, so let me cut this right here. And so as you can see, here we go. All right. Okay. It off so that's the first thing last thing you do is put the string on before you rotisserie it and last one in first one out so let's see there uh, are new stoves that rotisserie now well I know I'm sure there are Frank but I absolutely adore doing it on the barbecue so I am gonna continue in that brain uh, not that brain but in that vein okay so as you can see, I have to turn this so that you can see. Okay, there you go. So with my hands, because this was done very well, I'm just gonna pull off the leg and the thigh because it, it's so tender and it was cooked so well that it just, it just pulls right off. There you go. And then, well, somebody for lunch had to have eaten the leg, which is fine. <laughs> Imagine my shock just now when I looked and saw someone had eaten that leg, but okay. Um, and then there we go. Like, oh my God, who ate dinner? All right. So now what I'm going to do is this. Let me grab. Um, let me grab the poultry shears because what I want to do is show you this technique. Uh, poultry shears are not there. I think they're over here. Give me one second. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is the problem when your husband helps you do the dishes at night, is things end up in places that you're never sure of. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out, right now I'm cutting out the back of this, as you can see, and I'm gonna cut again in this direction to get this off. And let's see, yes. 
All right, so now I'm going to take this serrated knife because it makes it easier or let's see, maybe I'm gonna take this, let me try this. So the way that Martha Stewart do, does this is she literally releases the meat from the breast. She cuts it down along the top of the breastbone and then she cuts it down in this direction. So this was her technique for getting a turkey breast off the turkey. And I just thought it was genius. Rather than slicing it on the bone, there we go, just loosening it up. And let me just, there we go. There we go. Thomas home. Alrighty there. Okay, so there's one of the chicken breasts. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in just a minute. And then we're gonna turn around and loosen up the other breast just really quickly. Let's see, let me up against the bone here. There we go. Yep, just being very careful with the knife, separating the breast, getting it off whole. And sometimes this is a lot easier to do when it's warm because it hasn't had a chance to congeal yet. Um, but when it's warm, it works really well. And there we go. Okay, so what we have here are two these two breasts, which are lovely. So let me move all of these appliances. Now what I'm gonna do is take these, these two wings and set them on each side for anybody who might wanna pick them up and eat them. And I'm going to move this because I really need more space. Okay. And then I'm going to slice in thin slices crosswise. So let me, let me show you this. I'm going to go this way. So are you ready? Hey, Patty Kennedy or Keneally. Yes, Patty Keneally. I'm so sorry. For, at a distance, it looks like it could be Kennedy. Welcome, thank you for being here. We're making a Nassois salad. Of course, if you have um, avocado, it goes great in here. If you have, I have red cabbage over there, but I think I've added enough color. And I'm thinking to myself, who's gonna eat all of this anyway? Um, and so I think I'm stopping putting ingredients. I also wanna share with you though, that sometimes you want the feeling of, you, of having potatoes in there because that's what a Niswa salad is all about. And um, I actually will substitute mushrooms, these uh, portobello sliced mushrooms in place because it has that same texture that you get when biting into a boiled potato. Also remember that capers are a great idea for this. Um, always find capers in, um, in salad Niswa, in the traditional salad Niswa anyway. There was a bone that came out there. So there you go. So see how beautiful this is sliced. Can you see that? Can you see, yeah, you can see it. And what I'm going to do here is just literally slide this onto the knife like this, and then set it down neatly onto the top of the salad, which I'll show you in a minute. There we go. And it's kind of a deconstructive because we're not gonna chop it. We're not going to, um, there we go, okay. So I'll show that to you in just a minute. Let me finish, well, let me show it to you now. So there it is, all sliced. Do you see that? Lovely, and then I'm gonna put the other breast on the other side, which is gonna be great. This is just an extra couple of pieces. And let's start on this end using this knife. Actually, I'm gonna use this knife. So yeah, there we go, slicing. Perfect. There we go. Okay, let's take this, take this knife, slide it up underneath it. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. And 
then we've got this last piece. Let me chop this. So I'm very careful with chicken, even though this is cooked, and you don't really have to worry too much about bacteria when it's cooked. Um, and I'm just gonna, let's see, sprinkle this right down sort of the middle here. And that's just a piece of skin. So let me just clear this up and I will put it up here so that you can see. Simona is here. Wow, hey Simona, how are you? And take a look at that. Isn't that look gorgeous? Yay! Applause. Applause if you like it. Doesn't like it look just so beautiful? That is, it, and it just lays out so beautiful. You can, so we can drizzle our salad dressing right on the top of it, and it's just amazing. So, let me just slide this whole thing over, I think. Oh, boy, do you see what I'm talking about? Sometimes salads, you think, oh, it'll be so much easier if I just make a salad tonight, and it is, but it actually, you use up more dishes than you actually think. So for today, we're going to make a Dijon mustard. Okay, Roseanne, let's see. The spicy plum salad recipe has been posted and gather. Okay, thank you so much, Roseanne. All right, so here we go. We're going to squeeze this lemon. Hold on, let me get the sieve so we don't get any seeds. All right. I don't think I'm usually this disorganized, but salad has kind of... There we go, got all those seeds just fall right into the sieve. Can you guys see this? There we go, a little better view for all of you. There we go, let's just. There we go. Oh, this lemon has a lot of juice, unlike those limes that we had earlier in the week, right? Um, yes, so yummy looking. Thank you, Roseanne. Easy to make. Let's see, how long are we here? Oh my gosh, I've been here for an hour. This is crazy. I didn't realize. Okay, very quickly, let me just do this. I didn't have any idea that we were here all this long. But thank you all for hanging in there. My gosh, thank you so much. Okay, so any announcements, anything you guys would like to ask or do while I just quickly walk you through this salad dressing? Any ideas? I pulled the Temecula olive oil fresh grapefruit juice, I just, a fresh grapefruit oil. I just think that um, the freshness of the salad and everything else and the lemon dressing with the apple cider vinegar. Hey honey, come over here and show everybody how gorgeous you look. Come on, can you hear me? Yes, he can hear me. <laughs> this man has a thirst for life. Look at him. You have to step in. Hi there. Step in. I'm in. Oh, yes. My, so somebody just asked me about my cutting board. Do you want to tell them about my cutting board? That was your Christmas present last year. No, two years ago. Okay. And that was, and, um, and where did you get it? Um, that place uh, on uh, Rampart. Which is called? I always forget. William Sonoma. William Sonoma. Okay, a little apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Okay. You and always like that. Will you want to grab the Dijon mustard for me? Okay. All right. Um, so he surprised me. So you know that fabulous uh, knife rack that I have? Okay. Bye, everybody. Oh, no. What do I... You want to tell me what to put in the salad dressing? Oh, yeah. Put a little of this, um, my little uh, stevia. Okay. He likes stevia. He likes it just a little sweet, bit. Some... Sweet drops. Yes. All okay. natural. Uh-huh. It's very good. Okay, so how so, much How much of this? Well, I don't tell you, but I put actually two. No, 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 I'm not asking you about, well, go ahead. Well, I think two in because okay, you don't know it. In, yeah. But it's sweet it's like it's good. Sweet just like you. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, bye everybody. I'm gonna go know. watch the Dodgers. No, I was actually asking you how much Dijon mustard. Oh, I like a lot of Dijon because I'm not putting oil in. Uh -huh. I'm cutting back on oil. Okay. Okay. Tom, yeah. what? I am putting oil in this one. Oh, I wish you wouldn't, but... Well, just a little that's bit. That's all right. Okay, that's enough. There you go. Okay. No no, no set them out. Just, you know, <laughs> oh, a couple God. squeezes. All right. I'm sorry I asked. Heather's here. Hey, Heather. How are you? Okay. All right. Okay. So here we go. Okay. I'm swirling this up, if you can see it. And now I am going to emulsify it by still... Um, uh, 
He, yep, Roseanne says you're looking so fit. Thank you. Yes, he says thank you. Okay. Okay. And that's it for the dressing. And honestly, I really do want to taste it for you. So hang in there just a minute because I really want to make a big deal about, if you will, about the um, about the fresh grapefruit olive oil. So let's see how this did. There we go. Ready? Wow. Wow. Yes, the fresh grapefruit. Right there. Fresh grapefruit. Honestly, that's amazing. It's just vibrant. That is the only thing I can say about that. That just has a really vibrant, vibrant taste. That is just amazing. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to wish all of you a great weekend. We are going to go in. I'm just, I think I, I have to put a few of these just down the middle, just to give it some color or some dressing. Hold on. I'm just going to do this. He's turning on the Dodgers. How many of you, I just have to say, how many of you saw the Field of Dreams game last night? The baseball game that was played on at the Iowa cornfield where they built the baseball diamond called um, Field of Dreams. And it, I mean, it, Kevin Costner did such a beautiful job last night. He walked through the cornfields onto the field and throughout the first pitch, it was just amazing. It was just any of you who love baseball and love that movie, um, to, to have witnessed a real game played last night was amazing. So anyway, here is our um, greens of dreams and uh, our salad nissoir. And I'll go run, take a picture of it and get it posted. Thank you, thank you so much. So on the count of three, I'm wishing you a happy weekend. For those of you that applies, a very happy Shabbat Shalom. And on the count of three, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. Bye, everybody. Have a great weekend. See you on Monday.